In this video we're going to be replacing the transfer case gear oil in a 2007 Saturn view. It's the all-wheel drive. If you don't have a Saturn view, don't worry. If you have a four-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive, the same principles will apply here. If you're not sure what one looks like, all you do now is this piece right here. It bolts onto the transmission. So this is the transmission main housing here. The transfer case on the 2007 Saturn view is just this little portion right here. So it's a very quick job, you'll need a drain pan so you can catch all the old oil, anything like that, on the satin view anyway, it's a 3 8 inch socket, standard uh, socket end there, and also some full synthetic gear lubricant, make sure it's not conventional and it is full synthetic, and the weight is SAE 75W90, this is the exact one you need, you need 450 milliliters, so we have more than enough here, and that's what we need for the 2007 satin view, if you have a different view, vehicle you will have different gear oil requirements so make sure you have those ready for all the parts materials and oils I'll link them in the description below I'll include an, a sort of off-brand and also the GM specific oil so you have the option of choosing either one so like all my vehicles I really want to teach you something new so let's just quickly talk about what it is what is a transfer case now think of a transfer case as something that transfers power to or away from an axle so really a set of wheels that's in a nutshell what it does now in a little bit more detail the transfer case transfers power from the transmission as you saw briefly it's actually bolted to the transmission and internally it has sort of like a CV axle kind of join inside it so it's actually bolted onto the transmission itself takes the power from there and transfers it to the front and rear axles through the use of a drive shaft so its main sort of function is to synchronize the difference between the rotation of the front and rear wheels in much the same way say the rear differential acts on this car on the rear axle it's necessary because the front and rear tires never turn at the same speed this is why this is important and on other vehicles not this one they may also contain a set of low range gears for off-road use for example so if you've driven like a, say a Ford F-150 or something like that, or just been in someone else's, you may see an actual separate shifter for the transfer case so you can put the vehicle in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, for example, or high and low gears that we just talked about. On the 2007 Saturn View, the Saturn View series anyway of this uh, sort of era, the all-wheel drives, it's actually completely transparent to the driver. It's purely mechanical and you have no way to know it actually exists without, well, really knowing it's an all-wheel drive and crawling under the car. So all of that is taken away from the driver. There's no actual manual shifter or anything like that. It is totally transparent. So now we know the complete all-wheel drive system in the Saturn view for this year range anyway is completely transparent and also mechanical. The way it works is when the wheels slip, the input speed of the front wheels compared to the rears is greater. This in turn makes a gear set in the rear end spin, which pumps fluid and builds hydraulic pressure. When the, uh, the hydraulic pressure here in turn applies force to the clutch packs in the rear differential and engages the all-wheel drive. Once the speed is equal, then the unit disengages all on its own, and that's in a nutshell how the system works. So a couple of popular critiques of this all-wheel drive system is that it tends to overheat and cannot take much prolonged use. So what they sort of did was implemented a little delay before engagement. And when you're sliding down the road, a delay is not something you really want. But at the same time, you don't want your rear differential to explode through overheating, uh, for example. So, you know, it's a catch-22. Okay, enough learning, enough waffling, let's get going. Let's place the car on jack stands or ramps, it's really up to you. Engage the parking brake and just shake the car to make sure it's secure before we climb on underneath. Once you're happy it's secure, take your 3 8 inch socket wrench and get a little small extension and climb underneath the car. So coming in the front of the vehicle here, this is the center of the vehicle and this is as we saw earlier, the transfer case. This is the refill hole right here. And underneath is the drain hole right here. They both use the 3 8 inch socket wrench. So with things like transfer cases and differentials, we're not actually gonna remove the drain plug first. We're gonna remove the refill plug first. The last thing you wanna do is drain this of oil and you th um, thread the refill plug, for example, or it just won't come out. So we're actually gonna remove the refill plug first. 
When removing any socket like this that might be seized, just get a small flathead or something like that and make sure all the dirt is out of here so that your socket gets a really good grip on this. The last thing you want to do is round this. They are really hard to get out. Before we remove the refill plug here, just have your drain pan ready underneath so it's handy. I'm going to talk about a couple issues that can actually happen with transfer cases and why they can fail. So probably the most common problem is that a seal is gone and it's just slowly leaking transfer case oil out the uh, gasket here or even at the back where the drive shaft connects. And this just causes it to run low on oil. If it's not serviced then the gears can run hot and things can break inside. Problem number two is that the oil is just deteriorated inside over time. Now, things like the transfer case oil and the rear differential oil back there is that they're supposed to really last the lifetime of this vehicle, but if your vehicle is clicking over 200,000 miles, for example, you really need to get in here and just change it. The last thing you want is a potential failed transfer case over the sake of, you know, an $8, $9 bottle of gear oil. Another problem, where the transfer case meets the transmission here, just right here, there's an internal seal. Now the transmission will have transmission fluid inside, the transfer case will have gear oil inside. However, if the seal has been compromised, then you will find transmission fluid inside the transfer case, which is a big no-no, it should never be in there. So when you take off your refill uh, plug there, and transmission fluid is pouring out or anything at all because the fluid level has risen then you know there's an internal seal problem there. So just crank this with the breaker bar and take it off. If nothing pours out it's safe to say your seal is good. With the refill plug now removed we can remove the drain plug to have a look at the condition of the existing oil. You can actually dip a finger through here now just to check the level is actually level with the bottom of the refill plug which is where it should be. If you can't actually reach any liquid then it may have been running low for some time which is not a good sign. So I've cracked the drain plug here we're just going to remove this and drain it into our catch pan and have it ready. So just for the people that are worried about the condition of their gear oil or you know, the seal between the transfer case and the transmission, just inspect the gear oil that came out. Does it have a reddish tinge to it? Does it smell anything like transmission fluid? Is your transmission fluid in your car turning brown? Is your gear oil turning red? So these are the, some of the things that you can sort of identify, minor mixing or anything like that. Uh, if you're still unsure or you suspect then, you know, the, the transfer case replacement is the case of just removing the drive shaft on the front end and a few bolts. It's actually very easy to do on this vehicle. So let's get back to it. So now it's all drained out, we can replace the drain plug right here and begin to refill the transfer case. So I apologize for neglecting to mention it, but you do need something like a fluid pump to get the uh, new gear oil in. There's not enough room because the exhaust is in the way to refill it without the pump. So it's just a lot easier with this. Again, I'll link this in the description below. It's just a case of putting that in here and just squeezing the bulb and filling it up. Very easy. So just start pumping. You can't really overfill this, it will just start coming out the uh, refill hole. That's when you know it's actually done. Again, 450 milliliters if you really want to know that figure. And just have your drain pan underneath to catch any excess when it's full. So once it's full, it will start leaking over just a little. We know it's full then. You can also dip a finger just to check the level there. We're going to replace the refill bolt now. So just snug up the refill plug there and we are good to go. So if the video helped you, click like and subscribe. It's not just about changing the oil, it's learning about how it can go wrong and everything to do with a transfer case. So thank you for watching, I appreciate it.